more scenes are more fun though yes but we have a lot of, we we got a little carried away <laughs> we, we still have some fun scenes in there <laughs> why did you guys get a starlink we got a starlink because every time we searched for ourselves speedify we were ending out in reddit in discussion forums where people were complaining about their Starlinks not working and other people were telling them, well, just get Speedify. And then other people were saying, you're obviously AstroTurfers. <laughs> and uh, I'm sorry to say that we did not have the uh, foresight, wisdom, or uh, aggression to get, there were no AstroTurfers. Uh, those were legitimate Speedify users uh, giving word of mouth. So we had to go read about what, you know, what is the Starlink that we apparently help so much with. Um, you know, and then we started getting all these customer support questions. And so we had to get a Starlink to be able to answer stuff. All right. So why don't you tell us about our, our setup? Uh, yeah. How the heck did we make this thing with, you know, we got the, the, the Starlink, we've got the view of the city. We have you know, Speedify down the side. We have the Starlink controls the bottom center. How did you do this, Ryan? Right. So, <clears throat> since a lot of Speedify users are now using Starlink, uh, we, we thought it would be really important to um, drink our own champagne or eat our own dog food and um, start using Starlink ourselves. So we got our own Starlink and we put it up on the roof. And we have two 4K power over ethernet cameras set up aimed at the Starlink. And we're live streaming them 24 seven with OBS uh, from a Windows desktop computer that we hooked up to the two cameras and the Starlink. And we're using Streamlabs chatbot along with Stream Elements chatbot and both chatbots are allowing us to interact with the stream from the chat and change the OBS scenes. We're using a script in the Streamlabs chatbot called the OBS Remote Parameters script, which allows custom Python scripts and chats that come into the Streamlabs chatbot to change scenes in OBS through a WebSocket. And then we're also using Restream to send the stream from OBS out to Restream servers and then multi-stream the broadcast onto Twitch and YouTube. Although right now it's only on Twitch because we're on YouTube right now. Interesting. Could you have made it more complicated? Yeah, actually, <laughs> actually it was more complicated when we started it. Um, we've simplified it a bit since then. Um, because it went down a few times uh, from, <laughs> from the computer overheating or using too much memory or just from the connection dropouts. And we wanted to streamline the stream a little bit. Oh boy. This is simplified. <laughs> yeah, and so the uh, our uh, operations group now ended out scripting up in, they used Prometheus to monitor, you know, whether all of our Speedify servers are up. So they actually modified Prometheus to also monitor our Twitch stream. So we get alerts now and they, they've got graphs of, you know, how often we're live, you know, and every time, you know, and uh, every time that stream ends on Slack, we get alerts that, you know, we're not live on Twitch anymore. And uh, that's pretty cool. Of course, then one of us has to do something about it. Mm -hmm. You also wrote a, a cool Python script that interacts with the CLI. Yeah, so I wrote a Python script that's running on that PC that's using the Speedify command line interface to pull all those stats that go to the user interface out of this JSON. Um, so it gets her text of all the stats, the max speed, the min speed, the latency loss, the jitter. And I then send it to an N8N script I wrote. Uh, so N8N, I don't know, N8N.io, for those of you who want to look, is this drag and drop environment 
where you can connect APIs to each other. So I can take the stats and save them to a Google spreadsheet. I can take them and send them to Slack. Be like, oh, here are the stats for the day. And you know, um, so like we've got that spreadsheet of stats that we put out, you know, I don't know, once a week or something. And that's literally, that's what it is. So my Python script pulls it from the Speedify command line, makes an HTTP request to send it to our N8N that sends it into Google Sheets. And uh, it's uh, pretty cool. That right. script's also running on key commands too, right? Ah, yes. Um, and so when it sees various things, that's an important point. It's watching the stats and like, if it sees the number of saves suddenly go up by one, it sends, you know, like alt E, right? We made up all these alt key combinations to OBS. And then in OBS, there's uh, the key mapping stuff. You can say anytime you see a alt E from the keyboard, switch to this scene. Anytime you see this, you know, stop streaming, start streaming, whatever, all the commands, you can map them out. Uh, so we did that as well. So that is how things pop up when there are saves and failovers and stuff in the video. It's uh, my script watching the Speedify CLI and sending key combinations to the OBS window. Is a diagram and scripts and configuration posted somewhere? Yes, we <clears throat> we just put out a blog post on speedify.com slash blog that will have our um, our incident log and all the updates we made to the stream and, and the full setup. And we put out a few blogs in the past when we initially set up the stream that have more information about the scenes and the OBS setup. So what gear do you actually have on the roof? What's up there? So on the roof, we have just three tripods all secured with sandbags. And the tripod that's holding up the Starlink is wrapped in LED lights that go on when it gets dark out. Oh, those the little twinkle. things sticking off there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We also have some bird feeders mounted on there <laughs> to attract wildlife, <laughs> the local Philly wildlife, and uh, the Starlink itself. And then the other two tripods have the two Power Over Ethernet cameras on them. And then we're just running the the cable from the Starlink and the Ethernet cables from the two cameras down the side of the building. Did we learn anything here? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I would say the... PG the, version. <laughs> <laughs> Give us the PG version of what you learned. Um, I think overall it's way more important to have a stream that stays up than a stream that's like HD high quality. Uh, you know, uh, initially our stream was 1080p and I think 5,500 kilobits per second bit rate. And that, that was just too high quality to work well and reliably stay up on that 1.5 megabit per second secondary connection when the Starlink goes out. And you know, like most, a lot of the time, the Starlink is perfectly capable of running a high def HD 1080p live stream, but it's it's flaky sometimes. Yeah, sometimes it, it, we've seen a, more than 200 megabits down, 40 up. Mm -hmm. I mean, the download speeds are much higher than the upload speeds. Um, but it's not like DSL. I mean, when it's working well, it, it'll give you 40 up. You, know? you can do high definition. You, mm -hmm. yeah. Those good moments, you can do 4K. Right. But you can't count on them. Yeah. So if you're if you're in an important call or running an important live stream and you don't want it to drop out, then you need a backup connection. And to make sure that our stream still worked when Starlink went out and we shifted to our weaker backup connection. We lowered the streaming resolution from 1080p to 720p. We lowered the bit rate down a few times. Currently it's down to uh, 1500 kilobits per second. And we tried using OBS's 
dynamic bitrate setting, which is, it's currently in beta. And we hoped that would let the bitrate go higher when the connection's stronger and go low enough to keep the stream running when, when the connection weakens. But I think our, our connection was just getting so weak when the Starlink would drop out that it, it still wouldn't save the stream. Hmm. We lowered the stream resolution. Yeah, the dynamic bitrate didn't work that well. Yeah, we also found a setting in OBS called the auto reconnect setting. And oh yeah, we, <laughs> we set the delay for that all the way down to the minimum, which is one second. And turned up the, the number of attempts way up to 200. So if we lose connection, we'll... That's still only a couple minutes though. Yeah. I mean, but hopefully the stream wouldn't go down for more than a couple minutes. I mean, that's a pretty long dropout. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there are some cool Twitch features we turned on, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Twitch has a feature called disconnect protection and you enable it in your your Twitch channel settings on, on the Twitch website. And that that will step in if your stream goes down for under 90 seconds. It, it'll just show a placeholder image so your stream doesn't go down, Your view you don't lose your viewers, and you don't have to restart it uh, when you go live again. Nice. But it... <laughs> It only works with certain encoders. So it does work with OBS, but it doesn't work with Restream. So, uh, yeah. So we're only able to use it when we're streaming di directly to Twitch, but other times when we want to stream to multiple channels at once and we're using Restream, we can't take advantage of that feature. So apart from the internet connectivity related issues, um, running 24 by 7 live stream on Starlink. Have, have you seen any other challenges? Yeah. Um, yeah, other other than like connectivity issues, we've seen um, the stream drop out just from high memory and CPU usage from OBS on the streaming computer and, and OBS UI crashes. And I think that's just because we have so many moving parts to our stream because we're trying to do a lot of things at once. We've got multiple Python scripts running. We're taking photos, 4K photos every 30 seconds to make time-lapse animations. Uh, we've got a bunch of scenes set up in the advanced scene switcher to trigger with chatbots. So um, we've, we've simplified that stuff a bit over the past couple months to help OBS crash less often. Um, We've just like reduced the amount of scenes that we have and um, simplified the Python scripts. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when we post more tech talks, interviews, and tutorials.